what's more American than apple pie? And that's what we're going to bake today. And this is a raw material, starting out. Got them from an orchard. It's my mother-in-law's recipe. She was a fabulous pie baker and I got all of her recipes. So cut them in half and what I like to do is cut them in quarters. It's easy to get that core out. It takes six apples for an apple pie. So I'm going to peel them. I have quartered them and it's easier to get that out. And I'm using a paring knife I probably had for 50 years. You know, you get used to something, it feels good in your hand. Right. And so, and then I have another bowl over here. We're putting the sliced apples in. I am a uh, messy peeler. Mom's accusing me of taking too much of the apple with it. Four kilos. I know. Because I want to be fast. I know. So we can make easily four pies. Wow. If we were so inclined. I don't think we are. <laughs> it's been a long day. I think uh, we should just make a couple. Okay. This is one of the best res uh, recipes that my mother-in-law, and she was a fabulous cook, I've talked about that before. This is one of the best recipes she ever gave me, is Pappy's pie crust. So, mm -hmm. I'm passing that on to all of you. It's easy to roll out, you buy it, it's flaky, it's, it's just delicious. Mm -hmm. Or, this is what I use. Or you can buy the wrong one. <laughs> yeah, she's very much anti this. <laughs> I'm very pro Pappy's. Yeah, because all you do is you just take the whole thing out and then you just place it on the pie thing. But she- That's so easy. I know, that's why I like it. To have four discs like this in this, so enough for two pies. You take a little flour, and then you put it on, and you take rolling pin. Sometimes you wanna just coat your rolling pin with a little bit of flour, then it won't stick. Mm -hmm. But you wanna turn it every so often too. Dust off the flour, because you don't want that in any more flour in your thing, but you want it so that it won't stick to your toner. And if you can, the sizes are about the same, but if you can, you want to do the little, the bottom one a little bit bigger, simply because you want to pull that up. So I do it. So then you just kind of half it, pull it over, and make sure you got a little bit on each edge. Push it down a bit. And then, since fruit pies can be juicy, this is what I've learned, and I learned it recently. I wish I'd known it before. But I take a bit of cornflakes. So I just thought, well, what would absorb all that liquid? And that's all you do, just a handful of it. Mm -hmm. so then you add all of this. All of your apples. Whereas a lot of other pie recipes, um, you mix it with all the apples. Up here, it's literally you just put it right on top. And for some reason, that makes this the best pie. It is. Ever. A cup of sugar. Two heaping tablespoons of flour. Well rounded. They say a teaspoon of cinnamon. Uh, stir it up so that it, it's all incorporated. Just put it over the apples. So now you put a few thin pats of butter on the top. It just gives it a richer taste. We do the second crust. A little bit more flour. crust on and we try to seal it so if you can look at I'm taking the top crust and I'm pushing it underneath the bottom crust and it kind of seals the juices in and now we use a two thumb method you know you can use a fork you can also use all sorts of ways to seal that but I'm gonna do it the way I've done it my mom did it this way and my grandma did it this way you need to prick some holes in the pie because you need to let that steam come out. And then what I always do, because I like that little bit of sugar on the crust, is 
So it's ready to bake. Um, we'll put it in the oven for 400 degrees for 30 minutes and with, without any tin foil or anything on it. And then we'll check it, maybe another 10 minutes. It's starting to really brown up. Then I'll put the tin foil on it for maybe 10 minutes. It's usually in about an hour. And make sure it's cooked fully, but the crust doesn't brown too much. Okay, before we put it in the oven to bake, if we decided not to do that, if we wanted to freeze it, which I do almost all my pies, I freeze them. I take um, saran wrap and I wrap it really well. And then I take uh, aluminum foil and I wrap it good too. Then I take a plastic bag and I set it in the plastic bag and I tie that tight. Because the better you protect it, the longer it'll last. And these can last for a good six, seven, eight, nine months and really, really be still good. Well, time to put it in the oven and bake it for your family or for yourself. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a beauty. Here we go. Fruit pies usually drip over. So I always put a um, cookie sheet with aluminum foil on top of it in the very bottom. So as you can see, it did drip over and it caught it. And also put it on a rack, air underneath, um, helps it not get soggy in the bottom, the bottom crust. And what do you think? Mm. Yeah, it's the best. It really is. And again, the Macintosh is the one, is the apple that mushes down. Mm -hmm. And other people like a firmer, crisper apple mm -hmm. in their pies. Mm -hmm. And so it's all a matter of, t of taste. To taste, of taste. Really tasty. That was good, wasn't it? That was fantastic. <laughs> and actually, she is right. The Pappy's pie crust does taste homemade. It's very flaky. It's very buttery. It's just very, very good. They had to cook a lot because they had to feed threshers. They had to feed large families. And there was always somebody popping in. And they had people over for dinners often. Because yeah, Grandma they... collected good, good recipes <clears throat> forever. And then we eventually got them because Mom got the whole cookbook. We are just more than willing to give her the credit and to oh, yeah. throw it out on YouTube and say this is absolutely just the best pie recipe you're ever going to come across. Yeah, because this was her recipe. Yeah. She didn't have a cookbook. You know the little recipe books, everybody, that we all kind of start out with? She probably had a dozen and a half of them. Way in a, in a cupboard, and I expected to pull out a couple of them. Yeah, they <laughs> kept coming one out, right? right after another. Mm. But she said it was her hobby, mm -hmm. and it was. Yeah. You know, she loved to cook. And we're glad because we got some really good recipes from her. And we got to eat at her table. Yeah. That yeah. was always wonderful, too. Yep. Okay, so you want to talk about these here? Well, I was going to say, talking about baking, and we're just doing pies today. Mm -hmm. This was my mother-in-law's. When she passed away, this is one of the things I wanted. Because I had gotten my Grandma Carolyn Christopherson's my mother's and that's another one that I wanted mm -hmm. and um, then I have um, one of my own here and if one of the girls wants it this, this is uh, really over a hundred years worth of mm -hmm. baking mm -hmm. in my family mm -hmm. so I, I think they're precious yeah yeah that's a great idea yeah yeah Especially as the young generation, they start to want to cook and bake some more because it kind of skipped a generation with me. So then, like Cecilia, yeah, exactly. She's she's always she's asking me mm -hmm. for recipes and she's wanting to try new things. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, and the reason why I didn't really like to cook or bake is because I was just too busy with four little kids running underfoot. Yeah. So it was not my ha hobby. It was not my passion, and I just cooked to put food in the table, and most of it was slop. What's not? Yeah, it's like, oh, here you go. Here's some crap to eat. And then... No, what's not? <laughs> and then um, she was a good cook. She well, just to, got to the point where she didn't cook much anymore. Yeah, because I've had my fill. But so the next generation, so my kids, um, starting with Cecilia, she is going to be a good baker and a good cook because she's interested. Yeah, and she's so, a foodie, so yeah. she might as well make her own food stuff. Well, it's really good. She's doing a good job. We're proud of her. I much prefer baking. Mm-hmm. Cooking is not my forte. Mm -hmm. I just suit, if I could just bake all the time, I'd be a happy camper. Because, because if I'm feeling a little low or the weather's gray and rainy or the snowflakes are coming, um, I'd take a, a bag of flour or, and a canister of sugar and spices and I start, I put the music on and I start baking and 
it makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. It just mm -hmm. is warm and cozy and comfy and good smells in the room and or the, mm -hmm. the house. Yeah. Well, I hope you learned something today. It was fun um, doing going through all the procedures and how to make a delicious, a delectable, a wonderful, a ro aromatic. Aromatic? That too, apple pie. Yeah. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time. Yeah. Go make some pies. Go make some pies. Go impress all your loved ones. Right? Yeah, exactly. Cool. All right. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.